Now, I thought I heard in one of your previous interviews that you were saying solar glass. Now, does the solar panel have glass on it now? Is that a new thing or has it always been glass or? Um, it has been glass for a while. I oh, really? Know. Okay. So the solar panels have glass on them. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how does that work? It's, it's like a really huge panel, especially the hatch. Is the glass uh, not a really brittle? huge panel, but it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, you'll have to come by the shop and see some of our new solar toys. Okay, that, that's, thanks. It, I mean, it's glass seems like surprisingly flexible, surprisingly strong. Uh, I think there's been just a tremendous amount of glass advancements in the past uh, 10 years. Um, obviously our, our cell phones and other flexible uh, sure. devices have, uh, have really needed a different kind of glass, uh, but glass is still just the best. It's, it's the hardest, it's the most scratch resistant right. types of glasses that they have, you know, they're, they're great for impact resistance and other stuff. So, you know, we, we've gone through thousands of coupons of testing different materials here. Mm -hmm. And we thought that we could make, uh, make, you know, kind of polycarbonate, um, work long term, and there's different treatments you can do to polycarbonate to make it more scratch resistant. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, uh, the glass was actually lighter overall, hmm. tougher. Um, yeah, with, with, you know, kind of hail impact and the other things uh, much better. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's a, uh, it's it, you'll be surprised when you come. You know, we'll give you a hood panel to hold on one hand, and you can you can lift it with two fingers. Um, wow, it's a uh, crazy light, crazy flexible, and also you know. Uh, super hardness so we've we've been working with a, a great company in uh, hungary uh, on the glass supply and have just done just done a lot of testing and a lot of work uh, to uh -huh. get we're, we're actually building uh, a panel um with that new glass for gamma right now okay and they've been testing a bunch of panels i would imagine either this week or next week uh, we'll see that first uh first solar panel uh, with the new glass Okay, because the the panels that were on gamma at fully charged were plastic, right? They were polycarbonate. They're polycarbonate, yeah. Yeah, so, they're not they're not glass. And they were they were the poly they were the unkind of treated polycarbonate. So once uh -huh. you once you treat them, you know, like the the windshield on the Arkimoto was uh, was polycarbonate, but it was uh, it was treated so you could have windshield wipers and stuff, and you know it would still stand up. But the the ones that we had at fully charged, they were they were just polycarbonate, like you you'd get at Home Depot. Um, okay. you know, I'm more sophisticated than Home Depot, but you know, so you, you could scratch it and, you know, just moving it around and putting a cover on the vehicle and stuff. It showed a lot of uh, scratches. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I was afraid of with the plastic, the scratching. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear. And I think a lot of people will be happy to hear that it's glass. Yeah. You know, the, the polycarbonate is great for impact resistance. It, uh, it spreads uh -huh. load really well. Yeah. You know, even like to bully proof car, bulletproof uh, polycarbonate is out there and you know it's a, it's a real thing so mm -hmm. you know um from a kind of impact resistance and spreading force um you know polycarbonate is great uh but you know the glass has just come so far in the last few years and you know i i didn't really think that we could get a glass solution because i thought it was going to be too heavy um i thought you know like oh it's going to get a rock chip and shatter you got to worry about it like a windshield but it's just not the case. You know, we've done a lot of testing and, you know, it's, it's lightweight, it's super strong, it's crazy cr scratch resistant. And, you know, that does kind of everything we need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I forgot to ask one finance question, How, ATVM loan, where are we on that? Yeah, the, uh, the ATVM loan um, is, is progressing. We're still, you know, have energy into it. Um, you know, our partners at the DOE are kind of shepherding us through that. Uh, we don't think it's a near term solution. Okay. Uh, it does take a, a long time to make it through all the gates. I uh, see. To get one of those. So it's kind mm -hmm. of, kind of future talk. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a great way to build our second plant or third plant. Right. That kind of stuff. So it's not, uh, it's not something that's going to step in and, and help us with probably the first, you know, 2000 vehicles, um, maybe even 5,000 vehicles, but no, it is, uh, it is something that's, that's on our mind and, uh, Dwayne and our, and our, our lobbying group, uh, is working hard on that to, uh, to, to bring it to reality. Yeah. Yeah. Year okay. or two years. Yeah. Okay. I have some rapid fire kind of like tech questions that people want to know. So, we, it was just announced that there's like a 15 amp, 12 volt accessory plug in the back, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, so we can plug in things. Now, I think a lot of people were hoping that we would have a lot, a bigger inverter, kind of like the Ford F-150 has. You could run like power tools or like bigger induction stoves off of. 
yeah was it what was the what was the decision what was the decision making oh well the, the accessory plug is just a uh it's like a cigarette lighter right exactly all right so it's not i mean you can run an inverter on it to run some some small 110 and probably charge your laptop if you only have a one one exactly yeah we also have USB C that'll put out 60 watts each so you can charge your laptop off of uh, off the USB C as well okay but, yeah we, we plan on on making accessible the 12 volt uh, we haven't really put a lot of focus into, you know, do we want to have you, you know, get under the hood and actually tap into the 12 volt and then run a wire back or are mm -hmm. we going to run that and run some studs somewhere, you know, where you could tap into the 12 volt from the back, kind of like, uh, you know, the, the, some vehicles have like a place where you can remote jump start it because they hide the battery. So you got to put like some studs somewhere so you could jump start it, you know, some other time. But, but, you know, if you have access to the battery, you can take 1500 watts uh you know maybe more maybe 1800 watts or 2000 watts at a time mm -hmm. but our dc to dc uh converter is 1500 watts so you know there's, there's you 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 would be pulling uh from the traction pack 1500 watts anytime you want it so, right so you know 15 watts is, is completely tangible and you could probably you know run peak of, of 2000 watts with no problem but we haven't put a lot of focus into you know remote terminals or anything like that how to get to the 12 volt but but it's there and our DC to DC converter will provide a lot of power to it. So if people want to want to have at it with their induction cooktop or uh -huh. they want to <laughs> they want to host a uh, host a band somewhere and have yeah. outdoor lights and uh, and run some amps, then uh, the Aptera is a perfect uh, vehicle for it, I think. Right. But you guys ha don't have direct access to it at this time. So the launch editions won't have access to the traction battery. Uh, what what we've installed? Well, I mean, the only limitations to the cigarette lighter is that the wire is not thick enough to carry a lot of current, right? So, uh -huh. you could plug in something that's three hundred watts, probably and get away with it. But you uh -huh. know, if you pull too much power through that, you're just going to blow the fuse, right? Right. So, um, so th that's the problem is it's really the gauge of the wire uh, mm -hmm. that goes back. So, um, I, I we haven't had internal conversations of the need to take fifteen hundred watts out of the twelve volt battery for the launch edition vehicles. Okay. I mean, if you're if the if members of the Aptera Owners Club uh, shout uh -huh. loud enough, then then maybe we could uh, make okay. Make to that but i think there's a, a group of people that are very interested in that it's, especially like for people that are interested in like camping an induction stove would be really cool like they, they you know they have it on the on the ribbon yeah, it's, it's one of those things that uh, is, a, is a fairly easy aftermarket ad too so maybe okay. something we don't do but you know with with uh with with a couple tools our 12 volt battery is pretty easy to get to mm -hmm. uh, so to run a line from the 12 volt battery would not be that hard it's really what does the cover plate look like and what does the interface look like you know is it a mm -hmm. is it an xt90 connector like they use for some solar applications or you know what 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 does that connector look like and so you, you can know. pull like 1500 watts from the 12 volt battery yeah because the dc to dc takes your four 400 volts from your traction battery and turns uh -huh. it 12 volts okay and dc to dc box uh, uh -huh. is a 0.5 kilowatt box so it can it can basically recharge your battery at 1500 watts i see so you pull 2000 watts out of your battery it's just mm -hmm. you wouldn't be recharging it quick enough so eventually the the aptera would be like whoa what are you doing dude you're, yeah. you're filling all my 12 volt uh, -huh. uh but you know 1500 watts is easy because that's what the dc to dc will, will put back into the battery easily so um, obviously there's some provisions if the vehicle's on and you're you're blaring the music and you know the, the headlights are on then you're you already have some load on the 12 right. volt. you don't want to take 1500 but if you're not doing anything else mm -hmm. in theory yes we have a 1.5 kilowatt dc to dc converter and okay charges a 12 volt battery so okay do you know if that accessory the 12 the cigarette lighter in the back is that can that be turned on all the time like even when the aptera is off you know how some cars the cigarette lighter turns off when you turn off the car, and other cars you can leave it on. Yeah, that's uh, that's above my pay grade. Okay, on the engineering side. So okay. we'll, we'll have to get uh, Steve Fambro. Uh, yep, on the no problem. But uh, right. I would I would imagine that it it uh, does not come on unless the vehicle tells it to turn on because we have a digital fuse block and it, it probably doesn't turn that that fuse on unless it it wants to. Okay. Does but, Aptera? You know, but, uh, the cool okay. thing about that is through software, you can just put it in camp mode and camp mode turns it on. Okay. So, yeah. That's, that, that's what we want. Like, basically I was thinking some people want to run like small, like little 12 volt refrigerators when they go camping on it. And obviously you'd want that thing on all the time. Good, good feedback that maybe there needs to be a toggle switch for yeah. toggle, you know, 12 volt on all the time. Right. Right. 